That was the beauty about She never stopped laughing. She was never sad. In fact, we kept on saying, eh, I'm welcome, Missy Gochini. No thinking, she's just enjoying yeah, herself. Yeah. She's enjoying the journey. So that was her. So now when she couldn't eat, when she couldn't eat, what we would do for her as a family, we would take her to hospital. Big mistake. Things that one fails in dementia, your yeah. language is limited. You lose your ability to express yourself. So you can't even express yourself. I don't want to go to hospital. But you so find they yourself get frustrated. They get frustrated. Yeah. And that's why sometimes they become violent. Yeah. And they hit, at, they hit the, the people who are caring for them. You know, you are a lot yeah, mama mekua mandazim. Mama mekua mandazim. Squeezy is kama vile alikuwa. It's hormonal that makes people get dementia, prone to dementia more than men. And more so, women we live longer than men. Like, yeah, we live longer than men. So if you are there and you're in your 70, 80, and your husband died at 50, most likely you'll be Maybe they can catch struggling. up with you in your 80s. Yeah, in your 80s. Yeah. So you find the number, there are more women than men who struggle. Disease is increasing or it's the same? Or how is it now? Yeah, it's increasing. Globally, there's this slogan saying, tick, tick, tick. Every three seconds, somebody in the dementia, uh, somebody has been diagnosed with dementia. Every three seconds. Seconds. Hello, viewers, and welcome to Lucy More Network and also the Kenya Pro Aging Organization. And today we are working in collaboration with Women for Dementia Africa, and I am visiting one Monica Kenya Jui, a great caregiver. She is the CEO founder Women for Dementia Africa, and she was among the first people to support the dementia support groups in Nairobi. She has a story to tell. Like I said, we are here to teach to educate and give information to Kenyans about what goes along with aging a lot of times, although not all the times. And today we are going to discuss or talk about a rare monster called dementia. Uh, that is the degeneration of the brain. Monica has wealth of information, first-hand information. She has experienced, she has seen it, she has worked on it. She is a serious caregiver. She has traveled around the world seeking for knowledge to support her loved ones. And now, let us listen to Monica. Monica, how are you today? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, we've come to your home to thank visit. You. Thank you for the invitation, Monica. And congratulations for the work you've done on all the care you have given to your family members that you are about to tell us on dementia. And uh, maybe viewers, if you have not seen Monica, she'll be able to tell who she is by herself. Monica, introduce yourself, tell viewers who you are, and uh, tell us about you. First of all, I have to say thank you very much, Lucy, uh, for inviting me to this show. I've been watching you online and looking forward to the day when I'll be sitting at, with you as we discuss different issues that affect the elderly. Yes, my name, as you say, is Monica Kinyanjui. Uh, I'm the founder, I think, uh, I'm, I'm a mother, I'm a wife, and, and the CEO for this organization, at Women for Dementia Africa, which, is, which, which I began 2019. Monica, I've seen you working, I've seen you talk a lot and very affectionately about dementia. Why do you have, what really motivated you to even think of getting started to start an organization on specifically on dementia? Yeah, as, I, I, as you correctly called it, monster. I got af uh, been affected for, by dementia for over 21, 20 years. First of all, it began with my mother, and not my biological mother, my mother-in-law, who was um, who started showing signs of dementia. And those days I couldn't understand what it was. And I felt stranded, I felt, who has she, and, and, and who, who, who has she become? My mother-in-law was my friend. 
I mean, many people struggle with their mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was a lady from heaven. I mean, she was a mother-in-law not from hell, but from, from heaven. She embraced me as a daughter, and she loved me and understood I was not ready to do work from eight to five. Because of, I think maybe because of my personality nowadays, I think I understand what it is. So she embraced me and told me, instead of staying home in the house, come and be, we do business together. So I would go oh, to Oh, when shop. you just got married? When I, just, when I got married. Wow. Like two years before. After. Maybe, maybe four years after some experience of help with the house help, leaving children. And I just, I just realized I'm not cut to do eight to five. And she understood. And she embraced me. And she had told me, because you are done with housework and done with all the things and you've dropped your child to school, why don't you come to my office? You'll become foolish we stay at home. So we became friends. We liked each other. Mom started showing some, she kept on saying, we would meet people in the streets of, of, of her, where she had the shop. And she would say, and the person would say hi to her, oh, how are you? Then at the time when we move a few steps, she says, I don't even remember who that is. Then I would just laugh over it. And that, that, those days, mom was like in, she was like in her early 60s. And we just laugh over it. And then said, oh, OK. And then one time she just said, oh, actually, I, be, I begin forgetting a lot. I began forgetting a lot. I even yesterday I forgot where I'd parked the car. And we just laugh. But now it became so serious. One time she forgot and she ended up coming home with a taxi. That was the, that she was, leaves the car, the parking lot in Nairobi. And forgets where she wow. parked it. So now the time that we realized this is more than forgetting. And remember those days, we're talking about two or two. Or two, or two. Those days there was no information about dementia. All you can see, mom is no longer the person who she was before. She, she's, she's pulled back, she's, she's withdrawn. Even her, she then got to her many activities that she used to do. And uh, she's kind of taken back a back seat. And I would wonder, the only thing she kept, and she was very undermanned, was her regime of going to the gym. So such small things made me realize, oh, mom is not the same. Then when she could come now, even it became so bad she couldn't drive, she would go to the gym and forget where wow. the clothes she came with. So the driver would have to, to be called by the receptionist. Oh, mom is, uh, mama, the, the, your mom is, all the mama will let her. She can't remember what she came with. So everybody in the gym is told, get into the bathroom, cover yourselves. A man is coming in so she can identify. Those days were no phones. Yeah. that you could take a picture and show this is your clothes. So they would come and then they, they, they show, oh, this is the clothes she came with. So I remember that driver would remember, eh, hey, today I have to mark what she came with. So when I'm wondering, what is this? What is and this? you're this saying this? this is at age, early 60s? You no, know, uh, yeah, maybe mid-60s. We're talking about mid-60s yeah. now. It's progressive, as we're saying. Yeah. Things keep changing. She yeah. withdrawn. But it started like at, at age 60. Early, maybe early maybe 60. early 60. She would just withdraw and everything. She would start withdrawing from her people. and uh, But she, she was committed to her business. But not, she had managers. So it's a place to go in the morning and come back in the evening. And along the way, she would maybe... Uh, if I'm there, we'd have, we'll just meet, because she, as, she has, as I said, she embraced me. So mom, mom went shoot. So when, 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 now it progressed so much, and now me, I'm wondering, I can't even, my reaction to her was, I, let me just keep off. Did you think it was sickness at that point? We didn't know it was a sickness. We just at, so at this point, at what point now it is progressing, mm. the forgetfulness and things are getting worse. Mm. When at what point did you know as a family it was a problem? Fortunately, uh, because of information. Yeah. She was now uh, her husband sat us down and told us as a family, the reason why mama's been forgetting and all these things you're seeing is because. Uh, he's, she's struggling with a disease that is terminal, and that's called Alzheimer's. Was the husband a medical doctor? No, she had just, she had just got an information from her diagnosis. She had had some tests, she had had an MRI. So those are diagnosis that was done. Yeah. She was done those days. So we were told, me, I remember when he was breaking those news, I remember I was just crying. Because me, I was just saying, oh, terminal. 
I'm thinking of cancer. Oh, no. It's going to get worse. I didn't even know that it progresses. All I know she will not. So you said we need to make some steps. It's not like she was going to die the next minute. Yeah, minutes. or not even die. Mm -hmm. Because now it can be progressive, but I didn't know it was progressive, but we thought it was it's terminal. There's no healing. In all diseases, there's medicine. Yeah. Blood mm -hmm. pressure, there's medicine. Cancer, there's medicine. Diabetes, there's medicine. Then you're being told this new name called Alzheimer's or whatever. Alzheimer's. Now, in that way, of course, now later on, I discovered this Alzheimer's. So now I'm wondering, oh, I was so broken. Then shortly after that, but the beauty about it, uh, her, f her, her husband never left her side. He made sure she never missed things. She would go with her for funerals, he would go with her for weddings. Much as, much as she was not, Remembering. She, wa she was, her cognitive was not there. Her behavior has kind of like changed, but he would not leave her behind. And then she had a team of her girlfriends from Alliance. They would make a date every month to come and pick her and take her for a meal and then they, they bring her back. So her social life continued. For me, my reaction was, I don't know who this woman is. Uh, yes, I love her, but I can't handle this new disease. So I kind of kept off. I never managed to visit her. Of course, the way she had stopped well before from working from the shop. Okay, besides the husband telling you this is Alzheimer's mm. disease as mm. a family, mm. did then one get him to counsel you, to explain to you even what it was? Besides, you know this is just a family member who is mm. telling you he's mm. also heartbroken. Now, did you have anyone else, like no, a medical, no, like no, a counselor? No, 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 no. Did we even think we needed a counselor? We didn't even think we needed a counselor. We just say, you know, we just have to brace ourselves with this new journey and see how to care for our mom. And then now, shortly after that, now, the, her, shortly after that, she stayed at home. She was not moving a lot. And the little things like she could, so for me, I kept off. I was in denial, I kept off. My, my reaction to the whole thing, I kept off. And then, around that time, she quickly, around that time, she quickly developed into the point where she's not able to eat. And that's very common for people who are with Alzheimer's. You are not able to see this food needs to be left, to leave the plate and come into my mouth. So she will not eat because she cannot connect the food needs to come to her mouth or put a spoon. That is very common. So what we will do, that I remember was 20, 2007. That is three years down the line. Three years are down the line. We have been caring for her. We have had this schedule. Her girlfriend speak her once a month to hang out with her. Uh, we know mom is not the same, but she's there. And the joy about it, she used to laugh. She was full of laughter. That was the beauty about it. She never stopped laughing. She was never sad. In fact, we kept on saying, uh, America is Gochini. No thinking. She's just enjoying yeah, herself. Yeah. She's enjoying the journey. So that was her. So now when she couldn't eat, when she couldn't eat, what we would do for her as a family would take her to hospital. Big mistake. Admit her to hospital and help her because we are fearing her, 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 her that is her, the information now, her, the primary caregiver would say. We are fearing she stops, she will go hungry, and me, I can't handle somebody who's not eating. She's not eating for two days. But if only we knew we had information, it's just a matter of assisting her in eating. Reminding that this food needs to come from the plate to your mouth. So, unfortunately. So, what most people out there are lacking is information. Most of the time, we don't have information. There, there's no information out Not there. Not most, all the time. All the time, there's no information out there about dementia. First of all, it shocks you. And then, now even there's no information. Lucky now, there's the internet. There's a lot of information on the internet. And don't you have no internet to Google? Those and are the, not international. And they the are the majority. The people this organization works for, which are the majority, yeah. they have no idea. They try and explain it away by saying, you've been bewitched. Because if anything that you can't understand, yeah, it's a, you it's just quickly neurogi. say, neurogi, or you become spiritual, you say, yeah. she needs deliverance. Yeah. There is a curse in this family, you need to find out. That yes, is a disease, like any other disease, like diabetes like blood pressure like cancer and cancer or kidney kidney Failure, issues. Yeah. Disease. the only thing that affects the brain and anything brain people, your behavior just be, it's no longer the same so mom uh, she couldn't eat we would admit we take her to hospital big mistake 
you go to hospital, this is a new location, a new, new environment, you even confuse the, your loved one more. What does that mean? You know, I like, uh, we advise, now that, you know now that you know. I know, if you're somebody is living with dementia, do not remove them from the familiar surroundings to unfamiliar surrounding. People in Nairobi, people in, uh, in the village, a son comes or a daughter goes home and finds their mama is, is, is not eating, is not doing very well. She's, uh, of course, now maybe she has dementia. And then because you love your mother so much and your shags, Nuko, uh, 200 kilometers happy. away, mm -hmm. you say, let them bring them to Nairobi. And the person who arrives in Nairobi that night, the following day they are worse. They start doing things that you can't understand. First of all, they don't know the geography of your house. They are going to the bathroom. They will mess up in, the, in your house. They start doing things that they can't under, you can't understand. Because so, they're in a foreign place. Uh, yeah, they don't know. They don't know. Don't, people have this habit of taking their loved ones. And it's for, out of love. Because you want to be your person to be next to you. But don't remove them. Because they want familiar place where they wake up, they can smell the air, they can hear their cows is in the farmland, they can smell the, the air of, of their home is different from the Nairobi one or the city one. They are, the house, they know, they know this is the bathroom, they know this is the kitchen, they kind of all know the house. When they come to your house, and especially for those ones who have been worst, worst, who have bigger houses, they get lost in the house. So when you say, when you took her to the hospital and it was like, this is a foreign land yes. and she became worse. And well, are the doctors able now to tell you, are there our doctors, our nurses here in Kenya, are they able to know what's going on? No, unfortunately, no. Are you unfortunately, serious? it was very sad because those days she was, we, had, she was ad, we, had, we admitted her. I remember helping in the admission in the morning. In the afternoon when I came to see her, she couldn't negotiate herself to enter her bed. A simple thing like climbing, getting to bed, you had to help her. Meaning she's so, the whole Confused. thing, has, she's so disoriented. The confusion is now maximum. Not the body weakness, yeah. it is the mind which cannot yeah. comprehend. Yeah, comprehend. And then she... And even the people she's seeing, she's seeing they are the not people, familiar. And because her diagnosis was she's not eating. She was not eating. So in fact, I remember those cards they put on the bed like this, not eating. Make Nothing her, by mouth. Yeah, no, she's not MPO, eating. MPO, yes. Make sure she eats. So we got an, they, they, we got this order list. The, other time the, the hospital had this order list where you'd hire. And now the orderly was advised, make sure she eats the food. So the orderly started feeding her. Feeding her by force, feeding her, force feeding her. A mess. I remember one, coming to hospital and finding, and she's saying, I don't want. In fact, that time I remember, she was trying to watch something on TV. You're distracting her. Huh? You're distracting her. And it was when we're, it was Wangari Madai on TV. And she knew Wangari Madai. She was saying, mm -mm. I want to watch my alone. friend. Toka. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, now, in fact, they regress back to their, their vernacular. Yeah. I want to see my friend. So now I told her, no, you can't for, don't force feed her. If she didn't want to eat, don't force feed her. So that was in February 2007. And that's a characteristic with people with Alzheimer's or dementia, yeah. do not force them things. Do not force them things. Just get into their reality. We always say get into their reality. If they say they don't want to, I just respect. That's why even our organization dignity preserved to the end. Treat them with the dignity. At that particular time, they don't want to eat. At that particular time, they are saying they want to go home. And that is their home. Get into their reality. Don't tell them, oh, this is your home. Oh, this is your home. Where are you going? This is your home. This is your room. It's your room. This is your home and this is your husband. Those things are not there and they don't have that memory. The memory, this maybe this, who is this person in the house? Get into their reality. If they are seeing the husband as somebody who is a stranger to them and this man who comes to my house and I don't like him, go with that. Of course, the loved one that's a husband, I always see when I go to the field, they're affected because their loved ones are not, are not remembering. Their loved ones are not remembering. Oh. This is, my husband, my wife never know, recognizes so, me or the wife didn't recognize the husband. So at that time she was completely out. So when did she deteriorate completely? Now, what are the signs of total deterioration? Now she came back and we actually, those days she had been living without an assistant. We had to get a full-time assistant for her to live with her. And now, and she didn't choose them very And I'm sure even that assistant, you not know, anyone who is trained to no. understand. It's just no, somebody, it's a somebody. normal house girl. Uh, just a normal house girl. Come and skip company, this lady. 
because yeah, come and keep. And she didn't like it because she was a very independent woman. She didn't yeah. like it. And she was saying, nah, I've never had a woman stay in my house. No, I don't like it. And she complained. So three months later, she went, she regressed back not eating. She was readmitted. That was in May. When she came back from hospital, I remember May 3rd was her birthday. I came home and brought her flowers to wish her happy birthday. And she was saying, it's my birthday. I said, yeah, it's your birthday. And I don't, I don't remember what year she was turning. She was like maybe uh, 60. Uh, 69, or maybe almost 70. Yeah. So she said, oh, OK, it's my, oh, all right. Oh, but you know, of course, we're talking. Oh, it's my birthday. The following day, we were waking up early in the morning. We are heading, to, we have gone in an ambulance. We're heading to the hospital. This looks fatal. So what mom, is the diagnosis this time? Heart attack. Oh, no. and, her, and her stroke. All massive. Maybe the hydration because of not heating. And no, all it was, uh, yeah, maybe that. We don't know what it is. But I think it was also a lot of things that have been going on and she can't. Remember, one of the things that you, one fails in dementia, your yeah. language is limited. You lose your ability to express yourself. So you can't even express yourself. I don't want to go to hospital. But you so find they yourself, get frustrated. They, you get frustrated. Yeah. And that's why sometimes they become violent. Yeah. And they hit, at, they hit the, the people who are caring for them. Then when I scale you and I chop our heart, when they were zim. Yeah, mama mekua mandazim. Mama mekua mandazim. Squeeze is kama vile alikuwa. So those are the statements we hear when I got the field. So mom came back. We got a stroke, heart attack. She was in ICU for three months. Mm, she was in, that was May, she got, she got in ICU and then we, she was man. No, she was, it in ICU? she was in ICU for one month. Then she went to the ward. Then we quickly realized we better just manage her at home. She was more, almost like assisted, 100% care, oxygen, everything. We just made her one of the rooms become a hospital. And in September that year, 2007, mom rested. Wow. Mom rested. And it was very... In, and in your watch? Yes. Drew out you by her side. Hey, we watched her. We watched her. I never used to. And there's nothing you could do. You could do. Now she's now your. All you could do was hold her hands and explain you're here. I was expecting my last born child, and uh, I'll tell her the baby is uh, is going to be born in a, in two day in in a she month's time. She doesn't even understand. Maybe she could hear because there was some reaction where when she could she could it's you could feel she would hold your hand tighter. So I don't know if she would respond. We have been encouraged to speak to her. She was in a coma. So that was her. She rested. And then because of my, what motivated me to doing this? Now because of my, my, my. Not, now you, she's gone. She's, she's gone. gone. Now, now because you are of left my, again. Now because of that, that I guilt of not having mom. I say with the little information I have about dementia. Let me, let's, let me join the, let me, let me start support groups. Wow. We started support groups in Nairobi. We started support groups in Nairobi. A few the of first us, support groups? Yeah, in Nairobi. We started support groups in Nairobi. Now you have started understanding dementia. I'm understanding, and support groups have, have, have their place. Everything has support group. HIV has support group. Cancer support group. Wow. So, of course, we realized we need a support group, not as people who live in, people as caregivers, as children who are affected. So we'd meet in houses, we'd meet in this house this month. It was a monthly, we'd meet on this month, we'd meet in so-and-so's house. This month we meet so on the so and so's that you are meeting in your support group, mm. is it those people whose parents or their loved ones also yeah. have the same? Yes, I know. So are you mean there are many? Yeah. And that's, those days you're hearing word of mouth, so-and-so's mom. And these are people we went to school with, kind of in the kind of like in the social, we have a social, we kind of like know each other. We kind of like in the same space. So we hear so and so's mom has, or so and so's dad has. So we began. We began. It was began by a lady who passed on a few years ago, and she was called Mama Katanu. She was a, her husband was living in dementia. She was an American lady living in dementia. Uh, mom, husband was living in dementia. She had cared for him till the last. She cared wow. for him till the last stage. So I joined that support group. And, 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 and through your experiences, mm. Monica, and uh, you saw both men and women, do you, I have heard someone say it affects women more than men? Oh, yes. True? Yes. As uh, one of these days, you're going to Wamboi, you're going to interview Wamboi Karanja, and she's working in a program in Aga Khan Hospital, a research the, the university. There's a, 
there's something about women's hormonal that makes people get dementia, They're prone to dementia more than men. And more so, women will live longer than men. Like, yeah, <laughs> we live longer than men. So if you are there and you're in your 70, 80, and your husband died at 50, most likely you'll be Maybe they can catch up with you in your 80s. Yeah, in your 80s. Yeah. So you find the number, there are more women than men who struggle with dementia. And research has shown women struggle with dementia more than, especially Alzheimer's kind, more than men. And now, because you took, uh, I like you've been even all over, I've been abroad, you've been to different, you've done different courses on mm, this, mm. out of interest. Yeah. You're not even a medical anything, mm. but you're trying to understand and know what dementia is. Yes, so yes. So out of those experiences, yeah? Mm. What, what challenges do you think you meet as caregivers? There are lots of challenges. First of all, even acceptance. You ask me whether you are cancelled. You don't get counselors. Yeah. Counseling. This is somebody who was your mother, your father. You knew who they were. And then there's this behavior you can't understand. They are not you the need, same. You need support. And then and then it's an expensive disease. Even these an informal caregivers, they are very expensive. You ask them to come, it's not like uh, the usual caregiving where you, or, or to come and take care of a baby or something. It's very expensive. They'll ask for you for a treacherous amount. So you see some people end up uh, opt to, one of them if they, they leave their jobs. If it's a wife, you'll, she'll, she, maybe she's retired, she'll leave, she'll be at home. If it's a daughter, and majority, as I was saying, they, it affects women as, uh, dementia affects women more than men, even as caregivers, we, they form the biggest bulk of caregivers. You find it's daughters caring for their parents. You find it's, um, you find it's unpaid, the, the paid one is women who do that job. So, 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 so and if it's you expensive. Opt as a, if you opt as a, a family member and you leave your job yeah. or whatever you because someone has to take care of this person, the parent, this person, anyway. this person. So it means they forfeit their job and they do not have any pay. They don't have any. So income. that is a challenge. It's a challenge. And uh, first of all, family members react in a different way. There are those who will support you as you're caring for your loved one. You will they'll, they'll all become united, like us for us as a family, we are, by the grace of God we are, and God's blessing, we are so united for his own, our dad's care, who I'll share later, who is now we are caring for. We, we, are, we, are, we work together as a family. But you find some people, all they do is just to send money to this one who is doing the care. It's and money is not enough. Yeah. Because you remember they self-care for this person. It's a lot of emotional drain. And some, sometimes, this, and most of the time, this person doesn't even remember who you are. They don't know who you are. So you are caring for somebody who doesn't even know you're his daughter, or you're the daughter, or the son. And maybe now they reach a point, like you said, they can't swallow. They need special food. They need special food. I hear others that use diapers. Yes. Then I was going on with the expenses. And that was the caregiver. Now the caregiver, they are not the usual Tom, Dick, and Harry. Even if they are a former house, house help and they are trained, they will ask you for a lot of money. Some even ask, outrageous, they ask for 50,000. I was about to ask you, when you say they want a lot of money, how mm. much is that? 50,000 and they are staying in the house and you are feeding them. They are earning more than, even most graduates. Even they earn more than you, you. If so, yeah. you are to hire one so that you can work, you would rather actually stay home mm. yourself. That is true. That is true. So then come forward, there's a diet. The food, special food. Then maybe as they progress on, you will need somebody like physiotherapists because they're not moving as much as they were moving. And this is, I'm talking about middle class and upper class. These are those who can afford. Ford. And this, these are those who even understand what is a physiotherapist. Yes. Those who can understand what a diaper is. Yes, a diaper is. Diapers are not cheap of adult diapers. Last year, I think the VAT was, there was exemption. We tried to follow it up, it did not appear on the ground. So diapers for adults are not the same as children's diapers. They're expensive. Maybe their size and everything. Are they exempted now? I don't know whether this budget took care of that. So that's an expense. I hear 
when you hear you need diapers, it's a whole, it's an expense and a half. Very, very expensive. Of course, like, it is not one per day you're using. Yeah, that. it's not one per day. You'll have to use, like, a packet, a packet of 10 per, per four days. There's and that a, packet is, I hand is like 1,000 shillings. And, yeah, like, a packet, if you're lucky, they've gone up. Of wow. late, of late, they've gone to, the supermarket ones, the supermarket, they're more expensive. They are, like, uh, 1,500. But now we have, we have, now we know where to get them. We have the different suppliers. So you get for 30, you'll get for 2,300. That is for one week? That is for one week. Because that's it. So no, no, that is no, no, for two, a month? Maybe for a month if you're lucky. Yeah. But there's a friend of mine who was telling me she's using, her helper is using, so she was a bit concerned, uses, using 10 per, per day. Ten so, diapers per day. <laughs> so even if it is two thousand three hundred per month for diaper, mm. and remember, <laughs> the the allowance uh, they knew and Jami is giving the was this. <laughs> it is two thousand, and that's not even including medicine, eating, shelter, yeah. the diapers, yeah. the caregiver. Mm. All that is supposed to be. No, the new Jami will. The new Jami will not. That is not what one of the things that can even. Th can even take this will have to come from family members it's very you have to have liquid cash and remember this person maybe they're the ones who had the cup at the land they're the ones with the cows they're the ones with the properties basically you can't liquidate them and you need cash so you end up using your own cash which you don't have because you have children in school you have you know maybe a sandwich you're taking care of your parent and you're taking care of your children so you are in between as a sandwich. So generally, how does this affect you as a family? Because I had you mention a husband or a wife, the children, the grandchildren, the little one who are being born. Does it, how does it affect you? It affects you. It affects you very highly because you know you see, uh, emotionally you will be affected, financially you will be affected, and uh, and if they are violent, physically. You could be beaten half the time you're beaten if they're violent. So it affects the whole... They become destructive. Yeah, and you know, most of the time, dementia not being a disease for the elderly. Most of the majority are elderly. And they are grandparents and grandmothers. They are very... Before the disease, they were very warm and kind and very loving to their grandchildren. Now they sat here, and they, one of the things that affects dementia is the noise. So then the, one of the things, one of the people affected by is noise. Then they, the, the children, the grandchildren are there, are making, making so much noise. So this grandmother has become such a, a Kali grandmother or grandfather. Tokeni, the kids are also, the grandchildren are also, this one, the, 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 the dotting grandmother they knew. So they think or the, the grandma, grandfather. the grandma is becoming rude. Maybe yeah, not don't. loving, oh. very mean to them. Get out, go. Because of the noise. A noise everything you know is in the brain. You're affected by the noise. You're affected, your eyes are not seeing, your eyesight. You can't even smell your ears. So basically it affects everyone in the family. It it's a family disease. It's a family disease. It's a family disease. Because you don't know when it's going to, you are, you are told it's a terminal illness. You don't know if it is ending tomorrow. Yeah, no. After 10 years, no. after 20 years. No. Like you said, your mother was like almost 10 years or uh, Yeah, but you know, we, it, was, it wasn't, we didn't even reach the point where it was, yeah. we were diapers and Mom but, was, yeah. it, unfortunately, by the time she but was passing on, take that long. she was at the early stage of dementia. Yeah. The early, early, we will still move around with her. We still go around with places. But when it progresses, it can even be more than, more than 20 years. Wow. You have 20 years wow. of the disease. Wow. Mm. So generally, the family was affected. affected. And now, after your mom is gone, you started the organization. I, no, the I did women. not start this organization then. You start in the support groups. The support groups, but unfortunately for the support groups, when somebody dies, you don't want to come back to a support group. You don't want to come and listen to the story of my mother did this, my mother got lost, my father it's got traumatizing. lost. It's traumatizing. So you come and listen to the same stories. So what happened, the, the, the support groups that we had begun of, 20, of, of 15 people, they fizzled out because their people are dying. They fizzled, 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 fizzled. It became small. Then... Quickly after that, I, uh, after that, now I realized, now what do I do? What do I do? Another time I, I swapped myself into business. I was doing business. I had a clothes shop. And I didn't feel it. Dementia kept on calling me. 
the work of dementia kept on calling me. So Alzheimer's and dementia, Alzheimer's and dementia organization, ADUK was setting up the organization. I went there to volunteer. I volunteered for volunteered for a few years, a few months, even the setting. We our, uh, they were kind enough to send me to to Nigeria. I went to Nigeria for a conference, and there I lobbied. Well, there I lobbied for the African Regional Com Conference to come to Kenya. So in 2017, we had our, our African Conference wow. of Dementia. Congratulations. And many people realized, wow, this thing is here. And you know, it was com comforting people who are affected. Oh, there are people who are existing. They are men, not yeah. only me. Yeah, and then EDUK, Alzheimer's and Dementia Kenya, uh, led by Elizabeth Mutunga, there was the support group that keeps running. It's been running in life today in Nairobi. So there's people joining the support groups, they are feeling helped and everything. Shortly after that, now is the time now, I quickly again, I got an opportunity through NCD Alliance to go to Geneva. And there I went to a workshop where I got the statistics that women are more affected by the, than men. Yes. And then at the time this Women for Dementia Africa was born. Wow. And that now that you went for all these courses, mm. did, did it was you, workshop, yeah, it conferences. was workshop, oh, the, con the other conferences, mm. did you learn what ages get affected? Is it only over 60 and above? No, it's not an aging disease. You can even you have people who are 30 years old who have dementia. Who can get and dementia. you start seeing the same symptoms. So you symptoms. can have younger onset. And the symptoms are the same? The symptoms are the same. The symptoms, you have people who are and I see online a couple, I think they have a video, the, the husband got a dementia when he was 30, 32, and he's got a young family. So when it's, when, when, when it's brushed like it's an old people's disease, it's kind of like, it's a way to dismiss it. You know, everything that is catches, as you know, ageism. Yeah. And I think that is, is dismiss, when they say it's elderly or yeah. old persons, and that's how they, they are dismiss, dismissing it. That's how they dismiss the older person. They dismiss, ah, Meshika, no, you're going to Yeah, was yeah was there. that's a discrimination. That's now. a discrimination. Yeah. So we So say, this is not an aging disease. It's not an aging disease. It's like, it's a disease like any other disease. It means because even there are young people with uh, yeah with uh, with them um, going to aspire. There are young people with hypertension. So it there is a disease, and it is a disease for everybody. Mm. And it needs and it needs to be. It needs to be. Uh, when you dismiss it, you don't do policies. You don't do. You don't do planning with NHIF. You don't do. You don't do nothing for it. Because yeah. you say it's an elderly person. You, you know, Gonja was there. Was there. That's, why, gone that's why when you d dismissed older people mm. with those kind of things mm. in discrimination, mm. then you end up having no policies for them yeah, no that will protect for them. them. Yeah, from getting that, aging starts from the day you were born. born. You, are born. Age, you are here today, tomorrow you are one year old, mm. like that, like that, like that. Yeah. Wow. So that's when, then now, around that time, when I was going to all this and I'm trying to set up this. To yeah. learn what killed your mother. Uh, to learn, to, learn uh, to, her, to her, to I knew it was, I knew it. You Dimitri, knew, but you wanted to know more. Dementia did not kill mom. Yeah. Dementia never kills. Yeah. It's the other diseases that kill. Related. They are related, like now, how it was a stroke and a heart attack that took. It's like the way, there's no disease called HIV AIDS. Yes. It is the, the other. Opportunistic opt disease oh, yes, that exactly. Come. Yeah, with dementia you can live happily until the time when Jesus, uh, when the time when the Lord whatever calls happily him. is yeah so happily then, what happened yeah. whatever uh -huh. it is so what yeah. happened next so shortly that dad started showing some signs of dementia your father in law nah the husband they remember them the mze who told us your mother has got alzheimer's that is now like how many years later this is in this is in seven years ago is when Seven years ago is the time. No, I mean, eh, like how many after years? Seven the, years, we could the, say the, like eight the years. The wife was how, how, how ah. long with the dementia? After the, no, the wife has died. No, like mm. it took how long? How many years before she died? She took, she took remember, she we were diagnosed in two or three, uh -huh. and she died two or seven. So like four years. Four years. But so him, him, it was so like this seven. is your father-in-law who was introducing the wife has having gotten a new disease that is incurable mm. four years earlier and now he's the one who has the symptoms mm, no yeah but later on after seven years when she had passed on 
Seven years had, had so passed. So you could on. be talking about somebody today, three years to come with you. Yeah, you never know. So now you are the people now who saw the symptoms, not we, Yeah, he's mm -hmm. seen. But he keeps saying, I, my memory is not as sharp as it should be. I think I need to go back to the university to study. And he actually wanted to go to do a master's to see whether it would wake up his to sharpen, to sharpen, to sharpen his memory. And we're saying, mm. go for it, go for it, go for it, Mze. And uh, how old was he then? He was 85, 84, 84 there. But he was very active and very healthy. He didn't have opportunistic disease. Mom, remember, she had a blood pressure yeah. and before she had a, a, a stroke. Mm. Earlier on, 84, before he was married. Yeah. But dad, dad started having. He was healthy. He didn't have diabetes, very mild diabetes. He had no other so, NCDs, non So your disease. father in law, it cropped, uh, the dementia came at around eight or something. Yes. But your mother in law, it is uh, early 60s. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe mid 60s. Okay. Mid -60, yeah. So then what happened? So now we are seeing he's here living with, alone. With our, we have a sister who is autistic. There are two people who need care. And uh, and what happens because of the, the visual that affects your one of the things that affects you in dementia is visual. So you kept on falling, kept on falling, keep falling. It means a step you fall. And of course, and it's a very common as you've, you've gone around yeah. with the elderly. It's a very common thing for yeah, the elderly. And when they fall, there's something that breaking affects. their hips, breaking yeah. their legs. Yeah, yeah, it's a very common thing yeah. when people. So we we realized we quickly thought through it with my husband. That is highest time we, we, I'm talking about dementia to other yeah. people. Why can't we, charity starts at home. Yeah. Why can't we move and take care of him? Wow. And I had to leave, explain to my 10 year old daughter that we are going to stay in a house from an apartment to a house, to a home. And she couldn't take it. You know, you are change of, you have yeah. to change everything about your life. And it's, so we, I've been caring for him. I've been caring for him with the knowledge with the knowledge that I have. Wow. And that's been helpful. We've been able to put things in place. We are able to put a program for him. Dementia, when you have somebody, we have a program for the person. When you, and then you, if, they are, if they're able, now he's, on, now he's on assisted care completely. But when he was able, he was able to take his walk. So Monica, when you say assisted care, mm. there are some people out there who may not you know the differences of care. You say assisted. What do you mean by assisted? Well, you are not done for everything. Everything is done for you. You are being, being changed. Fed, you are being, being changed. You are, yeah. You are being put in a wheelchair. Yeah, you're being, you can't do anything for yourself. You wow. can't do anything. So you have to be assisted 100%. If you go to, you go to, I mean, you go to, your, you have like a long call. You sit on it until someone has to remove. Yes. So you must really be with people who care. Completely. I have people who have hearts and utu. Because this thing is not at your experience of anything. You have to have that good heart. You and have to have that heart from passion, special heart. Compassionate. Compassionate. It's not at any term they can have Anyway, it. it's working for the older persons, actually. It's, it's a different kind of care. Even it's like taking care of a kid. Yeah. It's not everyone who, who like kids. You can imagine yes. now. It's not everyone. Yeah, you there have are people. To have that who can, there are people when you can't stand even changing a kid. Yes. But if we imagine now you are changing a 90 yeah. year old, oh, yes. and it is often and often changing yeah. them like kids, yeah. feeding them like a kid, and this one carrying them to bed like a yeah. kid. That is now what is called assisted. Wow. So, but before assisted, he was fine. The only thing he didn't like you to meddle with him. He needed you to treat him like who he was. If he says he don't want to eat, don't force him to eat. If he don't want to come near visitors, if your visitors are coming, do not, they'll even tell you if you're visiting. He didn't want to see any visitors. Now you are a full-time caregiver. Yes. Full-time caregiver. Full-time caregiver. For an older person. An older person. You have taken almost 15 years taking care of older persons. I couldn't say I took care of mom. Taking care but is I not just you are there, of course. Caregiver. Yeah. And I remember I, I ran away. I wasn't in her space. She didn't even want that. No, it's you me. are so it's me. I, was, I was too guilty. I couldn't see this woman was fine. She's my friend. She's my friend. We used to go places with her. I couldn't drive those days. My mother used to take me to my, to clinics with my babies. When I would, yeah. That's Must how I've been traumatizing. Yeah, it was. I, the only way I could react to her was 
Let me take off. So this is something like a grieving process. Yes. People grieve differently. Yeah. They heal differently, and but the process has to go. Yeah. There are those who it, who it takes longer. Yeah. Now, Monica, what can you tell other people out there who are taking about the experiences like the ones you've had? Mm. Maybe they don't even know what it is. But uh, what would you tell them? A word of encouragement. Now that you are dealing with this, where how where is your organization? How do you get to the people now on the ground, Monica? Okay, I before I uh, let me talk about women for dementia because that is my passion and that is what. And why did you call it women for dementia, not uh, not maybe men and women with dementia? I told you women are most most affected as dementia. They're the biggest caregivers and they're the ones who are most affected. So my job is to amplify their plight. Yeah. Remember the woman with the dementia, she's at the down and under. Yeah. So I, my, our job is to amplify her. Amplify her. But it's not, a, it's not, a, we are not, we are not, our work is not focused on women. Our work is to amplify the woman who is the caregiver and who is most affected. But like you said, most of the caregivers that you've come across are women. Women. Even when they go out in the field. So women for dementia, we work there with the underprivileged. Remember the middle class have no issues. They, have not, they, don't have, they didn't have the information. They have internet. They under the low income, the people who, who I work with, like the Kibera daycare, the, the Kibera daycare, I have worked with county trackers in, in Kayole and Bakasi area. That's where I have, have, we have created support groups for them. We give them information. We give them the information. And there the poverty is high. Because remember, this person does work of ufua. Or does, the, and I told you there's a woman all the time, does work of ufua and has oh. to leave the dad in the house. Is this a symbio or an NGO? It's an NGO. So uh, which other parts of the country do you reach? Right now I'm working in Nairobi. I'm hoping to partner with other 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 people all over the country. Right now we are just based in Nairobi. We're just in Nairobi. Based in Nairobi, but we other partners who who have gone all over the country. Because what I've, what we've done is to, because as I said, dementia is a risk. Is a, the risk factor of dementia is older persons. So we work with older persons groups. And do you, out of your experience again, do you think this disease is increasing or it's the same, or how is it now? Yeah, it's increasing. Globally, there's this slogan saying, tick, 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 every three seconds, somebody in the dementia, uh, somebody has been diagnosed with dementia. Every three seconds. Second. Second. Somebody in the world has been diagnosed by dementia. And of course, Kenya is in the world. Yeah, it's in the world. It's not out of the world. So do you think, as a country, because of course, Article 57 of the Constitution of Kenya says it is the responsibility of the government and the family, to take care of the older persons. May they have dementia or not the dementia. Do you think our government is doing enough, Monica? No. When they have had senior, senior doctors, uh, psychiatrists say that, oh, that is an aging and older person's disease. Oh my God. On, yeah, the time when you would have, uh, during COVID times, when you would have uh, Zoom conferences or yeah. workshops, and then this particular famous doctor in the country says, oh, that is a, an, oh an elderly God. disease. So if this is a person who's supposed to advise the government. Or to advise the Kenyans. If they're the, one, the Kenyans and you're dismissing as an older person's disease. Nothing will be done. But thank God. Because uh, through lobbying, through a lot of work with different players. Currently, I'm even sitting in a group, in a, I'm sitting in a, in a working group of uh, drafting the dementia policy wow. in Kenya. So at least like the way there's a cancer policy, we are hoping to have a dementia Diabetes policy. policy. Diabetes policy. We have all this policy, mental health policy. Yeah. Yeah. Then the unfortunate thing for us as for me being in space of dementia, I have to go everywhere. I have to go where the older persons groups. Because Younger majority of, people. I have to go to the mental health group. Yeah. To share our disease presents itself in a mental health, in a mental way, although it's a neurological disorder. But I have to go where there's a mental mental health group. I have to also go to NCD, non-communicable diseases. 
to go and speak there so that to be able to, my, to stick out my neck so that we are not forgotten. Because it's a disease that most times are forgotten. You are telling me about some people who are taking care of their, their loved ones with dementia. And I'll talk about the low-income people, the ones I work for. Those are the ones who are really challenged, difficulties. We have different programs as an organization. We have a dignity care parks where we get donors and they support a home with uh, care parks. The reason why we, we came up with these dignity care parks is because, live, look at this person, they, they are going to Kufuwa. They leave their loved one in the, in the house because this person, a very common thing of dementia, people wander and they get lost. You hear somebody, I'm a potea, I'm a potea, I'm a potea. Yeah. That is a common. So but they, are potea, they lock them. When they come in the evening, they find everything in the house has been messed up. Or oh, they lock them in the house. Yeah, they messed up with incontinence in the house. So you're coming back from you are Kibarua from industrial area. They will a chakula. Ukuja kwa nyumba, you have to clean up this person and you don't have water. Na ule mfungia kwa nyumba yeah. na all day. Yeah, because what can you do? You can't let them wander. So first of all, you are stressed with the cleaning this person. Some, most of the time there is no water. So we came up with this idea of as an organization, we came up with dignity care parks. So we offer, we, offer, we offer care parks to these people. Right now it's halted because we've, this year we've not managed to push very well because we do it through fundraising. And then another thing which we also help as an organization, hygiene is one of the things that kills, lack of poor hygiene is what kills these people. Most of the time maybe a girl, as I said, women are the ones who care for their, their loved ones. Maybe the daughter caring for the father. Culturally, are you, able to, are you going to wash your father? Well, you can't wash your father. So what do you do? You have to hire somebody. A hundred bob is not an easy thing. So you have this program where you say, we give them also under that dignity park. We give them a hand. Within that, they, there's a hundred bob we give. We give towards this. So how often dignity. does that dignity kit take? We, we make sure How often do you give it? We, we, when we were giving it, when it was on, we were giving it, we, we, it was uh, monthly. But I'm sure Month, because of this. Year, we were given the park had it had um, it had one month's worth of diapers. When you hand it, yeah, when it was when we were when it was in progress. But now it's not. And now it's not. Now it's because of the economic hard time. And it's going to. It's, we were hoping to revive it with time. We are looking. For the, 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 my, and the, how many were the you board giving? Board of directors is looking for ways. How to many were it. you able to give per we month? We are giving per month a family t thirty diapers. Like how many families could we you give? In, we gave in Kayole. Like how gave, many people? We gave. We you know, gave, I'm trying to imagine 40. the percent. You we did 40, good, yes. Unfortunately for us, <laughs> when we went out to give out, free yeah. things are not the good things. Yeah. So we had people even who are cerebral. Sort of, other people were not living in dementia, but they had a need for the diapers. Yeah. So we couldn't relate. So now we are going back to the drain board to actually draw out, uh, map out who are actually living in dementia and need diapers. Those days we just gave them out like this. So you got people with cerebral palsy, you got people with cancer. So we, the program could not, would not sustain the program. You mixed it yourself we up. Mixed ourselves. You we mentioned not... something very important, Monica, when mm. you said some of these people who come from very, very poor backgrounds and people have to go and find work and look for something to eat and feed the rest of the family. Mm. You have to lock someone in the house or you tie them the whole day and come back mm, to them mm. to give them some food in the evening mm. if you are able to find something. Mm, mm. And you are saying that is the majority of the people. Yeah. Of the, in that bracket, because those are the people you are, you, you know you are only talking in Nairobi. Yeah. We have 47 counties. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. There are those even who have never even heard of this word dimension. Yeah. And they are out there. Yeah. Monica, what you, can you tell our government about this? Because I think we should be having institutions that at least to keep these people, mm. so to have some people who can take care of, instead of tying someone mm. who is having a problem, mm. not that they would wish to be like that. Mm. Someone who was doing their own work, mm. but all of a sudden things change. The next thing, because you must also sustain the rest of the members of the family mm. or feed your children, mm. you start tying your mother or your father in mm. the house mm. for you. To, what, what would you do, you're parting short to our government? Um, I would, I'd encourage the government to to have institutions where they can, even, even, even daycares, where you can have somebody leave their loved one before they go to work, 
And then in the evening, they come and pick the person. That person is fed, that person is taken care of. Then in the, just like a daycare for children. And then you come and pick your loved one. Or if not, if not, if not, you have institutions. Institutions where we can have these people stay, stay in and they are cared for. And not abandoned, not, not, not mistreated like we've seen in different institutions in this country, where they are taken care of. That's what we'd like to, to in all counties, because all counties have, eld, eld, uh, have elderly population, have people living in dementia, so that we can remove the burden of care from this family, which already burdened. Thank you, Monica. Mm. And now, because you are a caregiver, mm. outstanding one, who is all over known for the work you have done until you started thinking on how the other caregivers can help. Mm. What you do tell our caregivers out there, mm. can, and also how can you differentiate for them and show them caregiving, it's not about a maid. It's even your son can be your caregiver. Mm -hmm. your, even a father can be a caregiver of also, their daughter or yeah. son. Mm. So those people there who do not even know how to take care of these people who have this disease. Yeah. What you do tell them out of your experience? I would encourage them. I encourage them and good congratulations and good job. I, I salute you for doing this difficult and challenging uh, job, which is a, <laughs> it's a calling. So who is you who is there? Don't despair. And also learn to learn to self-care. Because uh, you don't want to leave this one. If you over if you don't self-care, you don't take care of yourself, if you have uh, if for, I'm talking even for especially somebody like a daughter, uh, a mother who is old elderly and you're taking care of your husband. Don't allow people to come in and help you. I'm talking to the mothers who care for their husbands. The, the wives would care for their husband. Yes, till death do your part, but let somebody to help you care. Because this is one, many of the things I, when I go to the field, I hear a lady is not, she has no life. She can't go to her chama, she can't go to church, because she's caring for this, uh, this, uh, love, this husband of hers. Self care yourself. Go to church. Don't, don't be lonely in the house and, and don't be lonely in the, caring. 24 hour care for this person will mentally drain you and this can easily take you away and leave your love and leave your loved one behind who will take care of them so self care take times off go and laugh with your girlfriends if you are a lady if you are a daughter make sure you have your me time go for a holiday and don't think don't 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 you must take care of yourself you must take care of it but i salute you i salute you for doing that noble job kenyans that is a message from Monica Kenyonjui, who is a caregiver, has taken care, and you have heard our story. And there are many more Monica Kenyonjui is out there. Mm. Please, what we are saying, we are not here, we are not just talking stories. We are here to educate, to give information, and to inspire others. If you're out there, and you have not subscribed to this YouTube channel, where we have all this information. The best thing you can do to your loved one, to your friends, is to share this information so that they can hear. Kenyans, let us all start for the, our older persons. My voice, your voice, our voices are the voices of the voiceless. So Monica, yeah. if one was, our view of our viewers would like to I mean to reach you out mm. for more advice or information on dementia. Where would they find you? In we, number? We our number is 0722 60 14 13. That number is mine to come to me and I'll advise you. The other one we're on Facebook page, uh, Women for Dementia Africa. We are also on Twitter, dementia underscore women. And uh, the rest, my social media people know. But once we are there, you'll get us. The as hashtag goes, Sote, Tuwanjibike, Tutunze, Wakongwe.